All right, so in my last video, I talked a lot about supercharged links and how I was configuring everything, but I made one very interesting mistake. I wasn't actually using the plugin. So what I was doing was using CSS to target the actual links and everything was in the CSS. So this was doing everything that I showed. But when I actually turned this off, the plugin didn't do anything. And when I only used the plugin, oh, that's completely separate. So overall, I basically did not show the plugin at all last time. So I'm going to actually show you the plugin in its entirety. And I actually, as you can see, I stopped using the CSS here and I moved to using the actual plugin. Why? Because of some additional features that I duh, wasn't aware of until I started fiddling with it. So oftentimes I make these videos and then I end up figuring out, oh wait, I've been doing something wrong the entire time. So you get to learn from my uh, now rectified ignorance. Want to get the latest releases of my Obsidian template vault and all of the work that I do in Obsidian, including the latest updates to my custom theme and CSS, supporting me on GitHub sponsors at any recurring tier for any of those amounts, will get you private access to the GitHub repository where all of my updates, everything from my template vault is updated in near real time with constant updates, tag releases, and helpful documentation, tutorials, and other content specifically for sponsors only. Want to report issues that you find and have them resolved swiftly? Or just talk and have discussions about what you may have found or what you might have questions about in the template vault and get priori prioritized responses from me? And becoming a sponsor of my template repository will get you all of this and more. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. So just to recap again, for those who didn't see the prior video, link somewhere, card, whatever. Supercharged links is really awesome for targeting the actual link objects inside of Obsidian. So you do the double brackets, you link to a note, and it can do certain things like displaying certain types of flair or custom styling, uh, etc. It's been a plugin I've been using for a long time until I just recently found out I wasn't even using the plugin, but I thought I've been using it for a long time. So Supercharged links is fairly easy to set up. Now, the issue I was having before is that when you had two different rules for the same action, this was thanks to a YouTube comment on the last video, is that if I had an article note and therefore I want to prepend the uh, newspaper emoji and it also had an unread or unprocessed status, so it, I wanted to also prepend a red square based on my tag taxonomy note I've shown before. So if I wanted to prepend both of these but have them as two separate checks, then they would conflict and then nothing would work. That's why I was using CSS, I'm guessing, way back. But you can easily get around this because I don't have a large, like, exponential uh, growth of different combinations of the emojis that I use. It's basically input type and then one of four, maybe five statuses. So, yeah, it's a little bit to set up initially, but I figured out that I can just make each rule for each combination and do it based on tags. Therefore, I don't even need those two attributes anymore that I was using in the prior video. So type and status, that's two less attributes I need to deal with. I can pull everything out of the tags. And this has some interesting effects on my the other parts of my workflow in that they're not really affected at all, but we'll go over that. So overall, I ended up moving all the settings and configurations into the actual plugin, the GUI, and all the configuration this way. So I'm gonna go through everything that I'm actually doing in the actual plugin now, uh, and it's not in CSS by itself anymore. <laughs> now that I'm not using CSS, which I was doing before, this is completely off. It does not function anymore. Um, at least I have, I have it turned off. So now that I'm configuring everything in the actual settings for the plugin, you know, here's the supercharged links plugin, it's installed and I did settings. So for this, all you need to do is create new and then I was using tag. And so then without the hashtag, what's the tag I'm using? I would do inbox and then uh, article and then I want a red square so this if this note has the tag of that then what would you then do so I'm actually going to change this to something I don't have already so a purple square and then I still only use this one which is adding content before the link so prepending text save so now the rule has um, it has a rule but there's no nothing applied to it yet so if this actually existed which it doesn't yet then nothing would happen. So let's go make this exist. So if I pick out a new note and say, hello world, and I'm gonna move this, move file to the root so we can see it there. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to give it the tag and I'm gonna say inbox article and a purple square. So now it has that tag. Now nothing's happening to it. 
So now inside of the supercharged links configuration, we've added the rule. It says, hey, pick up everything that hits that tag. So then we actually add the styling. And this is where I realized, oh, okay, this is how this plugin should be used. So style settings, which was the dependency, if you wanted to apply styling through the actual plugin instead of just CSS. This is why it's not an optional dependency. So if it has the tag, what's the text we are prepending? I'm going to add the newspaper and the purple square, and we're going to uh, prepend those. So now, if it has the tag, it prepends those to the name. And so now you can see up here in the file explorer, bam, it's right there. And eventually it'll update in here, I believe, um, to eventually have the file name. And just to double check, I might be crazy. Let me force reload. So it changes the settings. And then we should see it displayed in the file explorer view as well. There it is. Sometimes it needs to refresh a little bit. But now we actually have the rule applying the styling. And this is, just to zoom in, I always forget to zoom in. There we go. So we have the tag, we have the styling here, we have the styling in the in file explorer. All that That's it. So you make all the unique combinations and now the rule is applied. And so this is essentially it. So you do all that work of setting up the combinations of the different tags. So in my case, it would be like, you know, the, the newspaper article tag and then the different statuses. So like four or five individual line items per each input type. And then once it has the tags, you're done. And then you just set the, which styling gets applied to which of the combinations. So it's a little bit of work up front, but after you're done, it's a set it and forget it type of situation. And if you grab like my template vault, which, you know, links to that are always in the description, then you can just grab what I have right off the bat. So what does this actually do? Like, where is this configuration stored and what does it look like? So inside of the Obsidian Vault, there will be a snippets folder inside of the .obsidian hidden directory. If you're on Mac, you can do like command shift period and that will show hidden stuff. And you can go to the snippets folder inside of .obsidian and there's this new generated file, supercharged links gen. You don't want to edit this manually, but this is where you will see these things like held. So here is the actual CSS, and it applies all the different styling rules, all of this configuration, everything, it's almost a thousand lines, is all dynamically created by the plugin. So you can grab a copy of this if you grab my template vault, um, or at least the live one from GitHub sponsors. And this has all the settings. So you, you configure the plugin, you set the rules, you set the style, and it generates that uh, configuration. And so that, now you could have a version controlled configuration for the plugin, and this is it. So now, what are the benefits of doing things this way? Because there are differences between just doing the pure CSS way I was doing prior and doing things via the plugins. And I'm gonna show you the list of all the different areas where the plugin hits that the CSS did not. All right, so places that the Supercharged Links plugin actually displays the content that we set via the rules. So of course it's in the uh, the output of data view queries. This has been pretty much what I used it for uh, in my timeline query. So I could show a list of my completed uh, inputs that I processed. So you can see that here it's displaying with the link inside of the data view query. But now with supercharged links, it displays in all these other additional places on top of yes, the output of the data, the data view query. So what are the other places? Inside of the actual file explorer, you can actually see that it's now displaying in here as well. I don't have to chart, uh, like target a specific area with CSS to do this anymore. Uh, this just happens in the actual file explorer. If you open up the note, we saw this already earlier, is that it displays in the name of the tab with that note as well. If you go to the uh, query output, so if I went to this particular query, Inside of the query results, it will actually also display the name of this note with that content, should Obsidian decide to uh, work faster. So it'll display inside the query output, as well as the quick switcher, which if I open up the quick switcher, you can see here it is as well. Not sure why the results are taking so slow over there. But uh, the quick switcher results, if you have this linking to anything else or anything linking back to it, it will display in the backlinks pane as well. Uh, and the recent files plugin. So all of these different areas 
all can receive the uh, styling and the prepended information or any of the other styling that you set for supercharged links just based on the configuration inside of the plugin. So all of that is already like super awesome. But then supercharged links, the plugin also has interoperability with other plugins, both core and community. So if I actually go to the community plugin page and go to supercharged links, you will see that there's a list at the bottom of the readme for the plugin that shows everything that the plugin works well with already right off the bat, all the way at the bottom. So here we go. The core plugins, backlinks, like I said, outgoing links, the search starred files doesn't exist anymore, but it might work with bookmarks. I haven't checked quick switcher and then all of the community plugins that it works with. So namely data view that I use quick switcher plus plus is what I use recent files. Um, so you might use some of these other ones, but all of these work with supercharged links to display the content in those various areas where they display the links and the names of those links. So this is how I'm actually using the plugin. Now I'm actually moving everything to the plugin uh, because messing with raw CSS is not always a fun time. And this gives you so many more options. And then you have a version controlled configuration in your dot obsidian directory. So personally, I kind of like this approach better and it gets you more benefits. And I'm also using it in uh, an interesting way too, where inside of supercharged links, I'm not just doing my inputs anymore. Like there's other options available. So something I'm also doing and that I haven't finished for my other sub vaults is there are uh, rules I'm now setting. So for like my actual Zettelkasten notes, instead of just displaying the default note emoji, um, which is like this memo one, I can actually display the actual like uh, emoji for that particular note and how it is in processing in the file explorer to easily see uh, at a glance what something is. So like I have all of these different uh, notes here that have different um, emojis that correspond to what state of processing it's in. For some reason, it just decided to go screwy on me, but uh, it does display that now. There we go, see? And I really, really enjoy this. And I plan to do this for both my uh, developer devlog notes and my fitness, health fitness notes in my different vaults. But for my personal stuff in the Zettelkasten, this is awesome. Editing Brian here, I actually forgot one important thing to show you how this is working with the other stuff in my workflow. So inside of my vault, you probably know by now that I have my research database folder plugin. So this pulls information and builds like a whole dashboard of just my input type notes. So there's a whole bunch of information that can be um, pulled from this. And this is all pulling from the YAML metadata, which is kind of hard to scroll through here because of the size of the file names. But essentially it does the uh, additive um, tags or, you know, additive filters. So if I click red, it only shows me red. If I then click on headphones for podcasts, then it continues to reduce and progressively filter for all of the red podcast input notes that I have, which is too many. So this is still working. So it wasn't actually using the YAML metadata from my uh, CSS strategy of type and status on the notes, because if we go to the filters, in the uh, actual database folder plugin, it actually is searching the tags themselves for the content it's looking for. Does the tag contain a red square? Does the tag contain a newspaper emoji for article? And also there are just some global level filters for this particular database folder dashboard, which is tags cannot be empty. It has to have a tag and the tag has to contain an inbox. So it has to be an input note. Other than that, it pulls out all the different input types and status types. And that is how this uh, whole dashboard has been running the entire time. So using supercharged links and changing how I was doing it doesn't affect the rest of my workflow at all. Uh, in fact, it just makes it easier to manage because now I have even less metadata to worry about and it's all captured via the tags, which I was already using again. So pretty much nothing negative is affected and I just get more benefits of supercharged links displaying that content elsewhere inside of my vault. So hopefully next time when I'm showing a plugin and describing it, I'm actually using the plugin. So this was a very interesting and funny uh, mistake. So hopefully I don't have a repeat of this, but I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you all in the next one.